Yo, this is uh, Impartial Theorists. We're out here on the porch today, enjoying this beautiful weather. We've got some interesting stuff to talk about this week. Uh, kind of some scary stuff, some Supreme Court business about to go down. So, yeah, Justice Kennedy announced he's going to be retiring pretty soon here. He's like, what, in a couple months or something? So Trump is on it. He's uh, He immediately said he's going to get it. Gets cracking, find a judge. Yeah. He's got his list, and apparently he's got it narrowed down to three. And um, he's narrowed it down already. So uh, one of them is a Catholic judge, which is just a bad fucking combination. Aren't yeah. two of them Catholic? I wouldn't be. Sure. I think two of them Catholic, then one of them even no. evangelical. Why are you gonna not? You gonna make this shit more fucking Christian? Like, are you kidding me? But. I have a theory, which I think is going to be proven by this shit. I think Trump is actually like a Thanos, and he wants, he thinks of America as a phoenix. So he wants the shit to burn to the ground, so it can rise from the ashes. Because we talked about how this shit might be too far gone. Maybe Trump thinks that too. That's why he's making the Space Force. Actually, nah, I'm just like, <laughs> bullshitting right there. But I think he does want it to rise from the ashes. Maybe, like a 0.5% chance. That's good enough. Yeah, I'd say that's kind of a grandiose, optimist view there, but yeah. um, <laughs> no, nah, not really. That's that's the most pessimistic view. You want shit to go to shit, so he's letting shit go to shit, so it can, so that could be his legacy. So for the next fifty years, people we'll hate him, but after like a hundred people would be like, "Yo, this shit had to go to World War Three for us to fucking rebuild and become a fucking utopia." So, yeah, and so some people in the future, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like it's going to be either Judge Amy Coney Barrett, Amy Barrett, I guess, or Brett Kavanaugh, or Brett. Raymond Kethledge. So all white, they, they sound fairly really white. conservative. Yeah, they sound uh, like extremely, especially a dude named Brett. There's going to be a guy on the Supreme Court named Brett. <laughs> it's like having a guy on the Supreme Court named Chad. It's just... No. Nah. That's a... No. Nah. No. Nah. After you reach 28, you need to change your name if it's Brett. No, nah, fuck that. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, there's Brett Favre. He, he holds down the Brett. Yeah, well, he's Brett Favre. Yeah. Some people are allowed to have some dumbass names if they're good enough. But... Okay, so yeah, here's a picture of Raymond Kethledge. That's this is the I didn't need a picture. I can kind of see that. <laughs> I don't know so, he's old, but he looks like he's young. Yeah, fifty-one. Uh, uh, yeah, that's relatively young. I used to see that as old as fuck. That's not that old. He still has a good twenty in him. If he doesn't die from some cancer or some shit. So Brett Kavanaugh, um, he was appointed to the D.C. Circuit Court by George W. Bush in 2003. His confirmation was stalled by Democrats for about three years because he was too partisan, too young, and too inexperienced. Uh, he doesn't have much of a record, but it is conservative. Uh, and But uh, also, apparently, he doesn't go as far as some conservatives would like, so he's like a little bit more moderate. He's moderate, basically. In, in, in today's terms, he's moderate. And then so we've got Amy Coney, Amy, <laughs> Amy Coney Barrett. Yeah, that's the Amy Barrett. Why do I like, keep coming up with yeah. Amy Coney? But yeah, so she's apparently pretty religious. She apparently, like, people that are on the religious right really, like, vibe with her, so that kind of says something. I guess um, her and... She classifies as a Catholic judge. Anybody that classifies as a Catholic anything is over-religious because most people are just what they do. They're not a Muslim cab driver. They're not a Muslim president. Okay, no, nah, they're Muslim president. They're not a Muslim doctor. They're just a fucking doctor. If you classify as that first, that means you really care about that shit. It's like why, why black people say I'm a black... The first black president because the black part is important. Yeah. Yeah. So she really values the Catholic parts, meaning that's about to be some bad shit for Roe v. Wade. Well, yeah, so, and this is uh, from NPR's reporter, uh, Nina Totenberg. I think it's her name, Totenberg. Um, 
So she said, Amy Barrett has a long written record as a professor at Notre Dame Law School. She is loved by the social conservative wing of the party. Um, her okay. nomination was a lightning rod. Uh, Diane Feinstein said, it's obvious you're there because you would overturn Roe v. Yeah. Wade. But like, then she said she wasn't getting, when this was a lower court that she's getting pointed to, she's like, oh, well, this court wouldn't be able to do that. But now she can't. And then she said, I would faithfully apply all Supreme Court precedent. And so that's what she was saying in that position. So now she is on the Supreme Court. Yeah, but Court. she could, she could be could, referring to Supreme Court president before Roe v. Wade. Which yeah, is, but no, no. And she was saying like she would apply precedent. So that was kind of like a cop out at the time. Just be like, oh, I'm not on the Supreme Court. But now she, in the Supreme Court gets to it, like, they get to choose whether to apply precedent, like to change precedent and stuff yeah. like that. So, I mean, from yeah, the way it sounds, like... It could mean anything. No, I think it sounds like she definitely would. Nah. Like, she was basically just saying no at the time because yeah. it was an easy way yeah. to say no yeah. because it's a yeah. controversial topic and she wouldn't be on the Supreme Court to even decide. So she's probably going to say something similar like that, like, oh, I would review precedent or something like that. But then, but like, that doesn't mean it doesn't mean she has to because you're the Supreme Court. And know. also, when, what, 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 like... Era precedent, are you gonna look at? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that could also be <laughs> like a because the majority of it answer, is like it. over over like ninety percent is bad. Yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, and then so then we've got Brett Kavanaugh. So this is a picture of him right here. Um, I don't need to look at them, man. Yeah, it's just white people. I can't really tell the difference. He looks like a slightly younger. Original. Actually, the other guy looks better, but he's older. Right. But so Totenberg says this, he kind of uh, highlights a divide in the Republican Party between social conservatives and more establishment Republicans. And what the fuck do we mean by social conservative? Look that shit up because that's the second one. Because the Catholic judge woman was a social conservative. Yeah, yeah it means like you're opposed to like gay marriage and abortion. You sure? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was like socialist, so maybe you did. No, 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 no. Social concern means like your social values are. Oh, you want? Yeah, okay. So, um, but Totenberg says that she really sees Kavanaugh and Barrett as really similar, but for some reason, just like the social conservatives seem to like see, have more of a connection with Barrett, whereas they uh, view. Kavanaugh is like a more insider, a Washington insider, just for whatever. Like she said, it's so not even Washington the case. Insider, but it's just the, like, the less red side, or the more uh, the more moderate side, or the more. I guess for Trump, like voters, yeah, like they would some, want not want the insider. And, yeah, but some some people will refer to some established Republicans as Trump people, and some some people will refer to the established Republicans as. Also, the opposition to Trump. So sometimes I don't know. It depends on the context, but because with them, you lucky never know. They vote randomly. But anyway, you want to continue? Yeah. So um, we'll know in a few days here, like three days. Yeah. Uh, either way, it's gonna be bad. Yeah. And so what they're the main thing that people seem to be talking about is overturning Roe v. Wade. That's what, and like we were just talking about that. It seems like uh, Trump said that in his campaign. That do you remember what he said exactly? He said he would support overturning Roe v. Wade. Or like Why he would, he would had get so many abortions himself. <laughs> so he, how did he expect his kids to get their abortions now? Well, actually, what is kind of weird about it is like he in the past had always been supportive of abortion. Yeah, because so, like, he necessary. used it a lot. And, he used yeah. It and then he didn't him. really... Actually, that was, like, why they thought that he might not win is because he was kind of liberal. Yeah, in but some he senses. tried to pay that. He well, yeah, then during the campaign, he that. flipped. Yeah. And then, then that's when he bought all the, like, social conservative support. And then uh, now, I guess, he's kind of, like, got to stick with them, or maybe he won't. Well, it seems like he's going to. Cause yeah, because he wants to get reelected. 
which like I mean I guess it's just over for him. Like he's probably not having any more kids. He's probably got a yeah. vasectomy, so he's yeah. like fucking I'm good, so So you guys can suck up. <laughs> probably just gonna tell his kids to get vasectomies too, because now it's so easy. Yeah. Shit takes a week to heal. Fuck it. And you can fuck all the random strangers you want. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah, be, and so it's people. just kind of crazy because, like, most people on the left and just a lot of people in general see <coughs> abortion as a health service. Mm-hmm. And so it's like you're just taking away a health service. Because um, of Jesus. Yeah, and so the reason that, well, I'm sure everybody knows this, but, like, back in the day, you know, abortion back alley abortions were getting killing, pretty fucked yeah. up and like killing more people and that's why they finally were like hey we gotta but there's always been like abortion claims it's, it's like a states rights issue and so that's what that's what it's where gonna people, become a states rights issue if they overturn the rules you yeah yeah so depending on where you are low-key it would be bad but you could just drive to a different state but you still have to drive to a different fucking state yeah, it's almost kind of the way it is now because, uh, yeah, in Wisconsin, they only have, like, a lot of Republican states have already, like, defunded Planned Parenthood basically any way they can, and uh, a lot of their donations come from private donations, but, um, and that's how they are able to, like, maintain their services. But, um, yeah, so I was going to say in Wisconsin, they've been trying to shut it down, and they've only, I think, gotten a, a clinic in, like, Madison and Appleton, I think. And then maybe one in Milwaukee. So there's only like a handful. Actually, maybe the Appleton one shut down. But yeah, I know there's only like two or three left in the state now. And then Texas is the same way, where there's like only, I think, two or three in the state. So it's like. I mean, yeah, luckily, I guess they do still have a few, but it's like, if that. if it happens in Wisconsin, you know, like, there's already a ban here, so it's like, if the Supreme Court were to overturn Roe v. Wade, then that ban would just be constitutional and go into effect, and then we just wouldn't have abortion here, so, um, it, yeah, like you said, it would just be, people would have to drive to yeah, just make Minnesota or Illinois, which are more liberal, I mean, Illinois has been kind of <laughs> switching it up the last few years a little bit, but still mostly liberal with Chicago, but, uh... Yeah. Honestly, again, fuck it. Shit. This, this is a thing that we can talk about for a minute, but it's gonna happen, so... At least we know what's gonna happen. People can prepare for that shit. Yeah. I mean, I guess at least birth rates are going down. <laughs> I think abortion rates on the whole are, like, down quite a bit more than they've ever been, so, like... Yeah. Uh, people are getting, like, better at contraception and shit these days, so, like, hopefully also, it won't lead to just, like, back alley abortions and, like, tons of people just, like, also, dying baby from boomers, infections and Baby shit. boomers, like, their parents fucked, but baby boomers fucked a lot, too. Like, they were giving birth, like, every fucking year. That shit was, nah. And people don't want to have nine kids, five kids. Look, they don't want to fucking pretty bunch. Fuck that shit. You want five kids? No. And most people think like you. Most people I used to think like you. Well, and I wonder, have they even... Because, like, Republicans always would talk about, like, the exceptions. You know, like, like rape, incest, or... Some some Republicans don't believe in any exceptions. Yeah. A lot of them don't believe in any exceptions. Until they... And most of them still do fucking get abortions. It's like, what the... Uh, fucking hypocrites. That's... That's... Yeah. Well, yeah, that's the thing that, like, it's just so fucked up about it because it's, like, anybody that has had an abortion that at least I've talked to, it's, like, it's a tough decision to make and, like, a hard thing to go through, and it's not, like, at least the nobody's person. just doing it for, like... For fun. Yeah. Like, yo, shit, I get to have an abortion. Yeah, I mean... That's what's just so fucked up about it. It's like if you just look at if people that were opposed to it like actually talk to people who had an abortion and just like knew. I think like, some just of how it, it, more, A lot of them are in just a fucked up situation where it's like you, if you have the kid, like you're gonna be in through like years of hardship or like 
the partner is like an abusive person and that's I mean I don't know I think there's it's not like Republicans view it as that it's just like people that like have no respect for human life and like don't give a fuck and just like have sex all they want on their life it's just so far from the reality of it but like. why the fuck do they care what people are doing like that whole like Loki the story about Sodom and Gomorrah from the bible is why I don't fuck with old school but that nigga was a bitch <laughs> he was a heartless like he was a mob boss type of shit yeah don't tell me he's not gonna party no it is yeah okay. but we're at 17 minutes so. yeah like he, he made them fucking fuck up the whole city because people were doing shit that he didn't like and now people have taken that mindset and put themselves in God's shoes which already is fucked up because you aren't fucking God like God didn't tell you to do this shit no matter what the pastor said he didn't fucking tell you to do that shit but now they think they're God and they need to strike down the Sodom and Gomorrah which really isn't like no they want to strike that shit down and make it clean again cleanse basically not religious cleansing but moral cleansing they want to morally cleanse the country which is still fucking low-key borderline genocide because you're taking over people's rights people are going to die because of the shit that you believe in but honestly fuck it again i think trump is the savior if he wants to make all this shit but i don't really mean that but no, well, there's that. That's definitely like a theory that's out there. Though. I think that's why he like some of the. That's why the trolls would have him. Yeah, burn the fucking thing down. Yeah. So. Because Loki, that's just fun to see shit get fucked up, especially if you're a sadist. Yeah. yeah well, and especially if you don't movie. really have like, I feel like a lot of those trolls were just like young dudes that like really have no fucking like. It, no matter how much fuck Trump fucks up, like it's probably not even gonna affect them. It's you know? funny. Like, it's funny to them. Yeah. The tweets is like, it's like your old fucking puppet that you put in power. You know how much satisfaction that brings them? They're like, yo, we did this shit. Yeah. Even though they just contributed. Or one or this But shit, they. It's they they're relishing in the success of their extracurricular activities. That was a hard time to string together. <laughs> Shit. But, so, let's move on to the next thing, which is, I don't remember. Trade war. Yeah. So Trump has officially declared war, trade war, which is worse than actual war, in my opinion. It's, yeah. Anyway, he's declared a trade war on the world, and they're retaliating back. The first thing is China, China the, the U.S. and China both hit each other with $34 billion worth of trade, which doesn't sound like a lot, but yeah, that's that's a lot, and that's just the first, that's just the part one of the fucking trade war, and Canada hit back in America on some shit, I don't fucking, it was heavy, it was mostly shit that was going to hurt Wisconsin, like cheese, was it cheese? And it was yogurt and cheese, I think. Yeah. And Which doesn't sound like much, but that's basically what's going to be. Like, this place is 90% cows. Yeah. Loki, I've never seen a cow since I've been here. <laughs> well, like, uh, yeah. But this is Madison, that's why. We have sta- statues of cows, though. Yeah. All just, over. Yeah. And actually, there are cows on campus, if you have yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going to go look at fucking cows. Nah. Yeah. But, but there's just like a whole area of the campus that just smells like fucking a yeah. barn. Cause that's Can't the agricultural shit. shit. That's where those redneck people that live there. Yeah. Okay. No offense to any rednecks that wish this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Europe is also hitting back. Germany is hitting back, and it's gonna affect the car industry, which, as we we know, really affects the country. Not just because of the finance stuff, but also because of the jobs. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I've seen uh, in the last yeah. few days, Moog synthesizers said that they're gonna have to possibly start moving production overseas there in uh, Asheville, North Carolina. Also, and Harley Davidson is using that as an excuse to bounce. Yeah, I saw an article uh, about craft beer makers not being able to get their cans in the US. The big so ass, oh, oh, I thought you were talking about the shipping manufacturing. Those big ass aluminum tanks. No, I don't know. The one I saw was just about like the cans that they don't, 
the cans they use aren't made in America, I guess, and so like yeah. they're just gonna have to like. But every, they're if, not sure what they're gonna do at this point, but mm-hmm. like they're kind of screwed. Right no, but now, a lot so. of this stuff is metal based, like production, like the tanks and all that shit. Oh yeah, yeah. So even setting up is gonna become more expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean it could hurt new ones that are trying to start yeah. up. Mexico is gonna benefit so much. These people would just bounce there and then ship the shit here and then let the consumers pay the tariff. So in the end, after like a couple of years, when people eventually, like, when companies eventually, like, relocate and adjust because of this trade war, Mexico benefits because China will start investing in Mexico more. So none of these people have to get punished by the trade war because Mexico itself is getting punished by this fucking trade war because America issued tariffs on them. So, I think all in all, this benefits Mexico. So, hell yeah, to Mexicans. And maybe that would bring enough jobs that people have to, don't have to come here and get stuck in cages and shit. But, like a reporter. You put those kids in cages like they'll fuck you. That's a bad thing. Okay. <laughs> well, okay, so, I think let's try to look at this uh, <laughs> unbiasedly. Like, so, if Trump is saying, so, I mean, a lot of people don't disagree with Trump that, like, trade has gotten, that the U.S. is getting kind of screwed in some trade deals between Yeah, countries. but don't start, don't fuck up everything. Yeah, yeah, so what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, like, so there's other ways to go about it that, like, because this has been tried before in other presidents, and I think it was George Bush was the last one. He tried to do a, some trade war and, like, Everybody in the administration, after the fact, said that like it wasn't worth it and it yeah. was causing more. Pre 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 um, Y two K, America could have pulled it off because it was prospering at least a little bit before recession and shit. But they could have pulled it off because what did China really make? China wasn't as big as it is now. But you can't do that shit now. China makes half of the shit that's here. So, no, nah. it's a. Uh, and George Bush got caught in that transition. But Trump is flat out, he knows the impact of China, and he still does this shit. Yeah, and so the the trade war I'm referring to, I just want to make sure I'm not pulling this completely out of my... Okay, yes. In 2002, George Bush placed tariffs on imported steel. So that's not... And that was just steel at the time, so... This is, like, so much bigger than that, yeah. Anyway, you, you guys gotta remember the many different factors in this shit. Because how many countries in total are, I think, the EU, China, Russia, I think that was before though, Russia, fucking Mexico, Canada are all issuing tariffs on America. And America has issued tariffs on each one of them. That's just one country. So America's, only America's in the trade world with the world. Not everybody in the trade war with each other. So all these other countries are still going to prosper. But also, you got to look at the, the tariffs in the exponential amount. Because stupid shit like nails, like nails and hammers and shit, building costs is going to go up. So so many fucking things are going to go up just because metal. Like your fucking doorknob price is going to go up. And all that shit is going to lead to lower sales. So the 34 billion... Multiply that shit by ten. It's not even gonna cover the fucking impact that's gonna that's gonna actually happen. It's gonna go into the trillions for, and that's for that's that's just for one fucking country. That's just for China. And now you put in all these other countries. That shit is just crazy. Like this, this is literally worse than the actual war. Actual war might cost a little bit less. Yeah, it just seems so weird because it's like over nothing. Yeah, like, you could have done this in a way that all countries would have been like, yo, we get it. I understand why you're doing this. Yeah. But you just started firing bullets into the fucking air. Well, yeah, and you know, I guess so that's the, the thing too. Like, during the campaign when Trump was bringing up these ideas, I remember uh, there were like some European leaders saying like, oh yeah, you know, we could chip in a little more to the mm-hmm. like NATO stuff and like the U.S. Yeah. Acknowledging that the U.S. does pay like the majority of it. So it's like... They were willing to compromise because they need to keep fucking shit civil. But yeah, so it's like, there was these issues of like unfair trade going on, but it's like, yeah, where you could have, you know, 
come up and just like had a conversation and like made a better arrangement. Trump, yeah, went in with like AK, yeah, AK is like guns blazing, just shots fired. Well, good on those other countries. They're about to make a shit ton of money. And China's but, getting but, stronger, which. But Trump is sticking with his, his language that it's this is simple, trade wars are easy, like even if he backs down now, those countries aren't gonna back down. He started it. It's just gonna get worse. You can't wave a white flag with this shit. Like it's not that easy. You probably have to wait till next year's fucking um G eight summit. I think it's G is this G six or I don't fucking know China. Russia is out of that shit. So oh I did I didn't back in. I don't yeah. Trump complicates everything. I think what, like, you're saying that, like, uh, being worse on war, I mean, obviously people aren't, like, People aren't dying. Dying, so there's that. But, I mean, but I think it, it's people, affecting so yeah. many more people in their daily lives. Yeah. Like, because in war, I mean, who really, in America especially, like, who really is involved, it's like less than 1% are in the military. I'm not, so. it, I'm not even trying to diminish the value of the people, but that's, that's an instant, it's like, it's like, somebody shooting you and somebody like nailing you to a fucking cross which one like the shooting seems worse because you're dead but it's less drawn out it's less painful but this shit is going to be drawn out and painful like people are going to suffer for a while families are going to suffer it can bring upon a new recession which will be fun for the world not really actually it'll just be america that shit would literally just look like america well and you know it's like I kind of have kind of like kept this, try to maintain this thought that you know like Trump just kind of went about is going about doing every like undoing everything Obama did. So it's like you know maybe the next president will come and just undo everything Trump did. Obama. But I'm, it's kind of getting to the point where it's like it is becoming seemingly irreversible. Like this it's trade war, even if the tariffs, like even if Trump loses in 2020, and, like the tariffs and all that stuff is immediately reversed. It's like yeah, I think what you're saying, it's it's going to be longer lasting than that. You know? And it's, like, it's not even just with. And it's going to change the politics of other countries too, like. Yeah, a little bit. But even if it's not even just the countries that are gonna that are gonna remember this first first shot, it's gonna be the companies here too. Because more companies are eventually gonna start making plans to bounce just in case Trump does some crazy shit or he gets reelected. They're gonna start preparing. And the next president is gonna have a sh- shit show of a country to run. I hope it's a Republican president so he can drown in that shit. Probably shouldn't be a Republican president back to back. A Democrat is gonna suffer, and Democrats are low key pussy, so. It should be a moderate, like, yeah. a moderate. And so that's what, yeah, what, 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 what you're saying is like, and I mean, with the most synthesizer example that I brought up, is like, yeah, companies are saying, like, so this idea. Oh, I mean, it's, it seems like it's just backfiring because, yeah, they, they, it would still make more sense to move your operations overseas and then get that cheaper production, cheaper labor. Yeah, even before the tariffs, it already made more sense. Yeah, so now it just kind of makes more sense. And then, yeah, basically, you would just pass the tariff cost on to the consumer. So That's the smartest way to go about it. And the cheapest, because production cost is the most important factor because don't necessarily know if you're gonna sell everything, but you got you know you're gonna to have to spend this much money. That's a fixed cost. And if your fixed costs go up, that's a bitch. Variable cost is cool. But yeah, and even when I was at the Fox kind of thing, like Trump said, uh, he's like, oh, um, Europe doesn't wanna buy our corn anymore or something like that. He's like, well, we're not gonna buy their fancy cars anymore. That's no people are gonna people buy that shit even more. Well, I know, but that's like, like that's I just it seems insane to me that he's like speaking shit. on people's Without, behalf yeah. to that degree. It's like okay, you can maybe speak for people's like political views, yeah. but you can't speak to what fucking cars they yeah, want. That's that's, that's, <laughs> that's, just, that's 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 what's going taste. too far. Yeah, and also you're, he's fucking up the American car industry so much. Like you know, Ford Ford have stopped selling small cars. They they're, not, they're only gonna sell the F one fifty. And I think they even stopped the focus. They're selling the F-150 and the bigger ones and then one sedan out of like yeah. this seven. They're moving all that shit to Mexico and they're not even gonna sell them here. They're just gonna sell them everywhere else because they said, fuck it. Because the European cars are selling better. Like Toyotas are selling better here than any 
small Ford would ever do. So they said, why the fuck? And Fords, Fords sell very well everywhere else. Mm-hmm. Low key. But that's just one of the small fucking, and that's seven cars. That's a shit ton of plants. Because each plant only makes one model of car. So seven fucking cars cut, that's a shit ton of factories that are going to shut down. And Trump, yeah. But people forget Trump was in a fucking um, shit talking war for like four or five months ago. And this is the final consequence. They're just bouncing and leaving F 150s because those will sell. They literally can't make enough. Yeah. Yeah. But we can't talk about taste because imagine if Ford was European, was a, was a European country, and he's like, nah, nobody's gonna buy Ford's F 150s anymore. Fuck that. That's never gonna fucking happen. Yeah. It's literally America's favorite car. You guys are some ego motherfuckers, bro. Literally, there's always shortages of F-150s. Because people literally, once it lands on the lot, that day it's gone. I should become an F-150 salesman. That's easy money. I don't have to do shit. I'm just fucking, you want this car? It's the only one we have here for the next two days. And somebody might buy it in five minutes, take it. Especially in Wisconsin, shit. Actually, not. No, Texas will be better for that shit. I should move to Texas and become an F-150 salesman. That's my new idea. Yeah. Well, this is the end of the show, I think. Yep. I need a pee. Peace. Peace.